on the sidelines, episode zero. When the game ends and those Friday night lights dim. That's the cue to turn our attention onto the very players, coaches, and community that makes football in Union County great. Join Tim Winters as he covers the game from every angle, here on the sidelines. Hey everyone, Tim Winters here, and welcome to On the Sidelines, the official podcast of Union County Football. After 10 months on the back burner, this podcast has finally gone live. Well, sort of, I guess. This particular episode is more of an introduction, no interviews, just me yapping for a few minutes to give you an idea about the show, its format, its intentions, and a little bit about me. When I first decided to launch a podcast last year, I thought it would be a pretty easy venture for me. I knew there was a lot to learn about producing a podcast, but I already had television and radio production experience, so I thought, you know, how hard could this be? Little did I know that there was a bit more to it, and since I was doing this by myself, I soon realized I needed more time to invest in this project to make sure I delivered a product with content that I could be proud of. When the season ended, I began my podcasting research once again, and well, after about 10 months, here we are. Although I wish I had more time and more interviews under my belt, sometimes you just have to pass go and don't stop. What I hope you like about the podcasting format, and it's what truly attracted me to this platform, is that you can listen to it via your phone, your computer, any mobile device. You can stop it, Start it, rewind, forward, speed up, or slow down the audio. You have full control. And like most of what I put out in terms of content, these podcasts will live forever. I hope to put out new episodes of On the Sidelines every Monday and Thursday during the off-season and Mondays during the football season. The first week, I will provide three podcasts, this one included, and I'll pick up the Monday-Thursday schedule starting next week. Once we jump into the regular football season, I'll cut back on the podcast to once per week. The length of the show will be about 25 minutes on average. The podcast interviews will feature our Union County football players, coaches, journalists, and industry coaching experts in numerous supporting fields. The goal of the podcast is very much the goal of everything else that Union County football is all about, the promotion of the student-athlete football player here in Union County. Now, the podcasting forum allows actually for a a greater freedom in terms of getting more information out about the student-athlete, more time for the student-athlete to be able to reflect on a question and provide detailed answers. And hopefully, we'll get a greater understanding about the student-athlete and really what makes them click. And in terms of any of the coaches and and the coaches that actually have businesses in the area that are looking to uh, motivate these student-athletes to become a better student-athlete and have dedicated their lives and and their time to making that happen, to, f- to really promote their businesses and to get a greater understanding of what motivates them to make the student-athlete better. So I do believe that this podcasting forum is the perfect forum for that to happen, and I look forward to delivering that information to you each and every week of the year via this podcast on the sidelines. Okay, that's a brief outline of the podcast format, and I'll come back to it in the closing. So let me take a few minutes to tell you a little bit more about me and what has driven me to jump into yet another media platform. Now, most of you know me through any of my social media platforms that was created to cover anything and everything about Union County football. For those of you listening for the first time that might not know anything about me, this is for you. And for those of you that do know me, you might be thinking, Tim, you know, why start a podcast? Why did you ever start a local high school football website? Well, those are some good questions. So here's a little background information that should provide answers to those questions. My passion for sports started a long time ago. Growing up in New York, I immersed myself in sports and sports television and radio from as early as I can remember. Actually, one of my first earliest memories was playing baseball in the street in front of my house in 1973. Yeah, many of you are thinking, baseball? In the street? Yeah, we lived in New York, but we all had yards. But the street? That was our playground. Anyway, it was the National League Championship Series, 
and my New York Mets were playing the Cincinnati Reds, also known as the Big Red Machine. My friends and I were playing ball while listening to the game on the radio when all of a sudden, Mets Hall of Fame announcer, the late Bob Murphy, cried out about Cincinnati's Pete Rose and one of my favorite players, Mets shortstop Buddy Harrelson, getting into a fight. Within seconds, all of my friends and I darted back to our respective houses to watch the action live on TV. I can remember that day and moment so clearly. If I block out any distractions, I can still hear Bob Murphy's call of that brawl like it was yesterday. Growing up on Long Island, sports was my 24-7 escape. Although I suffered through most of my school days as a die-hard Mets fan, I swelled with pride watching our USA hockey team do the impossible during the 1980 Lake Placid Olympics. I forced my entire family to keep radio and television silence leading up to the evening's tape-delayed broadcast of that USA-Soviet hockey game on that Friday night in February. It was pretty easy in those days to completely isolate oneself from a sports score or result with no Twitter, Facebook, or texting in existence. That USA miracle win launched them into the gold medal game. Two days later, my dad allowed me to stay home from church so that I could watch the gold medal game between USA and Finland. An hour or so before that Sunday hockey game, I recall practicing my slap shot and wrist shot against the back steps leading to my house. I wore out my hockey stick during that month, and a few hours later, the USA team defeated Finland to win the gold medal. A few months later, My hometown New York Islanders began their journey on winning four straight Stanley Cup championships. I was hooked. Sports was my life, and I was fortunate to get hired as a production assistant after working as an intern on the same show for two years during college. The show was called Sports Nightly. The money wasn't great. I worked long weekends. I had Mondays and Tuesdays off, but it was the best job that I ever had. The working relationships I nurtured while working there opened doors for me to freelance at HBO Sports, ABC Sports, and ultimately with NBC Sports working for them on their coverage of the 1992 Summer Olympics in Barcelona, Spain. It was a dream come true for a young man who watched every Olympics since first getting hooked on the 1976 Winter Games in Innsbruck, Austria. It was while watching those Winter Games that I developed my first crush on a girl when I was 10. The girl, actually a teenager at the time, was gold medal figure skater Dorothy Hamill from nearby Riverside, Connecticut. Little did I know at the time that every other boy in the land had the same crush. Soon after I returned from Barcelona, I gave myself a few months to land a full-time position in television. I was hoping for another sports production role somewhere, but in the early 90s, the job market was tightening and the squeeze was that much more dramatic in the broadcasting industry. I did get a call to be a producer on a very popular afternoon television talk show, but couldn't fathom having to associate myself with the paternity suits and the lie detector tests that were being served up daily on the Maury Povich show. I decided to tell Maury and his people thanks, but no thanks, and I thus turned my back on television and started working sales in the stock photo industry, which led to managerial positions, which ultimately led me to North Carolina working as a North and South Carolina rep for a software sales company out of Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Fast forward to 2007-2008, as the U.S. economy and real estate market were in a free fall, my territory started to expand as some of my fellow sales reps started to either leave the company or were losing their jobs because of just the tough economic times. But I was now covering beyond the Carolinas, the state of Florida, Texas, and Wisconsin. Anyway, this went on for a number of years, and when I would get home late on a Friday night, I would be watching the sports recap on the local news, and I would see essentially the same two to three Union County schools covered every week. I knew that local sports television was handcuffed by time and resources, so I thought that I could contribute in some manner to promote the local brand of football being played in the county. My first course of action was to create a Facebook page in August of 2011, and as the season closed on December 3rd with Porter Ridge playing Scotland County for the 4A state championship, the Facebook page at that time had just over 300 fans, and my Union County football Twitter account was also building a pretty strong following as well. I decided to create a website after the 2011 season. 
The website launched in early 2012, and it has been expanding its role in terms of what it offers to fans and how it promotes the players in this area. That has always been and will always be the number one objective and goal of Union County football, to promote and elevate the student-athletes that play football in this county. I knew that there were local papers that did a great job covering the football scene here and a website or two that posted weekly stats, but I wanted to do something different. I wanted to take your kids, lift them and their quotes off the local papers, and have everyone see their face and hear their words. I want Union County football to be their platform, to use all the social media arms that I have created, whether it's the Facebook page, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and now this podcast, to reach out and catch the attention of not only every football fan in this county, but to those recruiters and college coaches that are always in search of quality student-athletes. This podcast is now the new extension to hopefully a wider audience. For those of you that are new to podcasts and are listening in for the first time, a podcast is a great communication tool that really fits in within the lifestyle of each potential audience member. I hope that you truly love the content that I will begin sharing with you via this podcast. As you listen to these shows in the coming weeks, if you do enjoy the content, I would just ask if you could please go over to iTunes, and if you deem it worthy of a five-star review, that you can give the show just that iTunes is a major player in the podcasting industry, and strong reviews and subscribers are huge factors in the success of this podcast. As always, I truly appreciate all the support and kind words that I have received over the last number of years. It means a great deal to me. Thanks again for listening, and don't forget to subscribe to this podcast and check out our website at uniontownyfootball.com. Thanks for listening to On the Sidelines, the official podcast of UnionCountyFootball.com, the number one online source for football information in Union County, North Carolina. 